Hello, everybody. It's your rabid raccoon, and <sighs> mm, excuse me. <laughs> Nothing like tang and coffee mixed together. Oh, I'm tired. Tired. Well earned, because I stayed up talking with my friend last night, and you know when you do that whole. Good night, and then you poke at each other, you know, texting. We were texting, and, you know, one of us goes, you know, has to add, you have to add one more little comment. Usually it's me. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, ha, 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 ha. Okay, good night. Okay, you add a little, a little jab. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Good night, good night. One little more. You know, it's at least three times. Three's, three's the charm, and then four is like, okay, Kim, go to bed. <laughs> All right. Bye now. It's like you're really pushing it on number four. And I've learned... <laughs> I've learned with my sister Darcy. Hey Darcy, if you're watching this, I don't I don't even think she watches these. I don't blame her. She gets enough of me in real life. I mean, too much of a good thing is just overflow. Um with Darcy, I have to let her have the last word because it gets really competitive. So I, I've learned with her, because she's my sister, and I love her, I let her win. So Darcy, if you're watching this, yes, I let you win. <laughs> I think she knows that. Um, got a lot to talk about today, so I may either go all the way, oh, or I may split it up and torture you. Mm, both ways are torture. First of all, here's the thing. This phone of mine is possessed, and I'll tell you why. It worked great for a long time, and I, I just think that it's a combination of me getting bored with apps and deleting them, and maybe some of them having advertisements. And the fact that, uh, like, I'll download them, get bored with them, and then delete them. I've never been, I've never downloaded <laughs> this many apps in my life. But I like to try out different um, art apps because I was looking for certain ones. Like, I used to have this really cool, um... oh, sorry, my neck. <laughs> Somebody used to like those sound effects. Ow. I'm trying out this new cervical pillow. I got it off of Amazon. and Because my neck is just so bad. And the trigger points in my neck and shoulders. You know how I had those trigger point injections? Well, they didn't work. I thought they did. I thought they were going to, and they didn't. It's like nothing. Had all these injections. I don't know. How many did I say I had? Like 12? Who knows? I had too many <laughs> because they didn't work. I go back in two weeks. I'm thinking maybe the knots are just too tight, and it's going to take a few um, injections. I was going to um, hopefully get them loosened up a little bit so I could go to um, like a, a, a massage therapist or something and get them, uh, loosened up even more. I'm afraid to go to my chiropractor right now. He's great, but I'm afraid to go to him because, uh, even though he's works well with me with the FM, sometimes I come out of there so damn sore and I'm sore enough as it is. Anyway, enough of the old old lady stories, but the cervical pillow, and I always think of cervix when I'm thinking of cervical pillows. <laughs> Let me just slide that under my there cervix. 
Ah, so comfy. It's got a, it's a rectangular type pillow. And it's got a, um, well, not really a hole, but kind of a hole in the middle because there's still a little bit of padding and material in the middle. And it fits a standard size pillowcase. And the whole edging is memory foamish kind of, but more comfortable. So the idea is when you lay your head in it, it keeps your neck at the proper angle. So you're laying more like this. Wait, I'm, I'm tipping my phone. So imagine, <laughs> okay, imagine with me, lean your phone while you're watching this, if you're watching it on your phone. And so you're laying with your neck straight and your head in the proper position, okay? So now you can tip your phone back. So that you're keeping your neck properly aligned with your spine and your head so you're not like this <sighs> when you wake up in the morning. I did a lot of um, reading and research like I do, typical Gemini. And um, that one came up with really good reviews and it was only 19 dollars usd so i figured i'd give it a try because what we do have are you know the <laughs> you're gonna laugh but and i don't order a lot of stuff off the tv well maybe we do hello kiki my cat's here um what was i gonna say oh yeah um you know the um the pillow guy. Uh, I'm trying to think of the my pill my pillows. Yeah, that's it. The my pillow guy. Um, I got a hell of a deal on two pillows. I paid the price of one pillow. I got two for the price of one. And oh, I said to Paul, I saw a commercial for the pillow, and I've been watching it for a while because. I had a, um, a memory foam pillow that had a curve on it and it worked for a long time and then all of a sudden it just stopped working. And I think I gave it to my daughter and I don't think she liked it. I don't remember. And my son wanted nothing to do with it. He's like, yeah. So, um, and Paul didn't want it. Uh, it's still downstairs actually. <laughs> I hate to throw those things away because all of a sudden you might say, you remember where I put that pillow? I may want it again. But it's probably going to go out because I wouldn't want to give that stuff to savers because I would never buy a pillow from like Goodwill or something. Anyway, so um, we had the pillows from the pillow guy and they are, they are really worth the money and they wash up well they're made in america um and stuff like that in his own factory in america so the those pillows are the best and you fluff them up and they're nice and paul always fluffs my pillow for me every night he's so sweet but excuse me with all these problems i'm having hi kiki she's cleaning herself do you have to do your yoga on my lap? Huh? You have to do your yoga on my lap? So, um, he, he, the pillow guy did not visit my house. But my neck has gotten so bad that I thought I'd try this cervical pillow. <laughs> so it was weird laying in it last night, you know, trying to get in that donut, that rectangular donut there just right. And um, once I did, I I slept pretty well. But like I said, I stayed up kind of late, so I'm going to probably take a nap. Not that you really care, but I will give you a review of <laughs> that pillow in probably a month because you got to give it a chance. It needs to mold to my neckage. <laughs> um... 
it got a lot of good reviews. And it, like I said, I didn't want to invest a ton of money into a pillow, but it was comparable to more expensive ones. So I figured, hey, it's my neck, it's my future. <laughs> Let's do a little tiny investment without going full throttle. <laughs> so back to Cameron, okay. <sighs> this boy is possessed. We definitely have to take him to see a psychiatrist because I don't know what's going on. I seriously don't. Um, when he's home, it seems like when he's home during the day, um, like in the summertime when he was home full day on the days that he was home, he started to get where he was really, really good. Um, we started a behavior chart thing again. Remember, I think I told you this. Um, he earned some rewards because he wanted to do this. Things were getting better. And then he wasn't asking for the rewards, but he was still earning them. You know what I mean? It's like his focus changed on he just wanted to be you know, calmer and work, work towards, you know, a happier home sort of thing. And he was cleaning his room without ask, you know, without being asked. And he was doing extra things without being asked. And now it's like all of a sudden a switch went off and morning routines are difficult. Evening routines are hell. And he's so mean with his words. Like this morning, um, I got up and I said to him very carefully, because we had a crappy night last night, I said, um, Cameron, now remember, we're working towards um, your your." Uh, tokens because that's that's this is kind of how you have to do it with my son anyway you know he needs reminders and visuals so I show him his little um uh, um his little token board that it's um an app on my phone he picked it and I said you, you've only got one token. Okay, he's gone days without a token. <laughs> and I said, so let's have a good morning. Okay, um, I got cut off on that. So if I'm going to try to keep these as um, smooth as possible until I figure out what's going on, I'm going to have to contact support. But um, if I get cut off, I just keep rolling. So, um, <laughs> you see my lip? I was itching my nose. <laughs> um, so I will work as best as I can with my video editing skills on my app. <laughs> so you might get pretty little technical difficulties in between. So my, um, my son said to me, um, what was it he said? Uh, see, that's the worst thing that can happen to someone with a very bad attention span. Um, oh, he was like, okay. And then he's in his room and he's supposed to be getting dressed and he's, he's got his iPad. He's playing on his iPad and he's got a deck of cards in the other hand. What? <laughs> he could be playing with something else. So I was grateful for that. But it's like, Cameron, do you remember why you're in here? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be getting dressed. I said, okay. I said, would you like me to hold on to your iPad while you get dressed? No, that's okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So flip it over until you're done. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he goes, okay. 
So he did get dressed, but then um, he lied about washing his face because he still had Pop-Tart all over his face. It's, or cereal or whatever. And why do you have to lie, man? Why do you have to lie? Um, like when it's time to go down for, for example, when it's time to go down for the bus and I say, I ask, where's your backpack? I didn't bring it home. Yes, you did. Because we just put your lunch pail in there. Well, why you lying? I said, oh, really? Funny, it's hanging right there on the door handle that we have to go out of. And then we're standing downstairs next to the door, waiting for the bus, and the venom comes out. I don't like you. And I just went, okay. Staring out the door. I want to see Grandpa and Grandma. I'm just looking out the door. Mm. 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 Come on, you fucking boss. I'm going to kill you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where the fuck is the bus? I really don't like you. And then he raises his fist. Dude, really? So I puff up, you know, make myself look bigger than the five foot four that I am because this kid is like five foot seven and a half. And, uh, you know, I'm looking up at his chin. (laughs) That's about as high as I can see. And I'm going, put the fist down. So he puts the fist down and he's staring at me like this. And I said, that's one strike. No! He yells. (laughs) Yes, I devised this uh, strike system. He doesn't want me to get to three, because if I get to three... Grandparents aren't visiting till 2019, and I mean it. So, (laughs) and he knows it, because I've called his bluff on stuff before. I don't pull any punches, and you could ask my daughter. (laughs) So, bus finally comes. (laughs) Excuse me. Bus finally comes, and I go, have a great day. I love you. And he looks at me. Like that. And he goes and gets on the bus. And I saw him sitting in the back seat looking at me. Or the, you know, the side back window. And I waved to him smiling. Bye. <laughs> <Little jerk. laughs> I'm telling you. I, I. <laughs> every day. It's the same shit. Right now, okay, when he's in trouble, he will say, I want to see, and then you can fill in the blank. It's either grandpa, grandma, nana, Santa, 
aunt so-and-so. Yeah, Darcy, you're one of them. And uh, we just ignore them. <laughs> I'm waiting for I'd like to see the wee little leprechaun. <laughs> I always tell him, yeah, and I want to see Chris Pratt, but that ain't happening. <laughs> oh, and that's another thing. He, um, I found out, I was trying to tell you guys one time something he was saying that he brought home from school that, because we never say this, and I couldn't think of what it was. Well, I, I remembered it because he did it a couple of days ago. Sucker. <laughs> What are you up to, sucker? It's like, where does that come from? Sucker. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, excuse me. So, you know, raising kids sucks. Had I known this was going to be this hard, I don't know. The nunnery kind of looks pretty damn cool. Oh, I think I offended my cat. She ran away. She doesn't like sunka. <laughs> what is she doing? I just want to make sure she's not scratching my furniture. Hold on. No, she's assuming the position for cleaning. Kitty yoga. <laughs> so, um, I, uh, I don't, I don't like, I don't like where this is going, you know, with kids today. Um, not just with, uh, behaviors towards, you know, autism sucks. It really does. But there's also other things going on, like these kids just trying to function out there, you know, like the good kids. Um, these poor kids that are, are trying to uh, navigate in the world and be good kids and stay moral and um, hold on coffee time. These kids that are trying to, um, you know, get through school and keep their morals and try to find good kids to hang around with and experience normal things like dating and, you know, just those milestones, you know, because I hated school, okay? I've talked about that, I think. Um, I had very bad experiences. I was, you know, the odd duck, the class rebel. Yeah, they actually gave me that title. Um, and I uh, never fit in. Well, there are kids that do like school and want to have the good experiences and, um, you know, don't want to drink, don't want to do drugs, don't want to have sex. They just want to have a nice experience and learn and find like a good guy or a good girl to you know hold hands you know the way they used to do it i mean i'm not naive i'm not stupid i know that people have always done stuff got knocked up you know done drugs you know gotten venereal diseases and worse i know all of that but it's even harder today because now you have instant instant everything with the internet you know all the all the technology with the phones and um you know you can sneak and talk to your boyfriend or girlfriend or 
whatever all night long you can hook up quick with tinder and all that you can lie about your age there there's so much more all these new drugs coming really face rig really they must have a thing against good kids <laughs> you know there is no time limit on this face rig I don't know what's going on I may have to um, I may who knows but anyway um, so I was talking about this with someone yesterday and um, I was telling her I'm a people watcher yeah I'm creepy <laughs> because I, I don't like people much I only like a few people and because most people are douchebags and the ones that get all the attention are the ones that are the assholes the ones that uh, brag the most the ones that do the most the ones that lie the ones that um, you know are willing to go and do whatever you want them to do and people will listen to anything you want you know they'll they'll just sit there and listen to anything you tell them even if it's a lie they want to hear those words and they'll settle for anything because they don't know what it's like to be alone and be happy they can't they can't make themselves happy you know they're afraid to be alone what's wrong with being alone you know it's good to have like i'm married and i've been married for 17 years i like my space i do i i mean i love sharing space with my husband but and i couldn't share my space with a lot of people you know and a lot of people oh my god people people no there's not many people that could put up with me and I'm I'm being honest I am a very very acquired taste um, I, I I and I've said this before and I'll admit it to anybody that asks me I am a very difficult person to put up with um, I have a lot of I don't know if you call them quirks or um, bad habits. Uh, I'm I know I'm a bit abrasive. Um, I I'm just not easy to get along with in you know in confined space for long periods of time. Um, I have a lot of weird habits I'm I've got a lot of OCDs I'm very particular about certain things and I rah, 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 rah. not like I don't I don't go after him like peck away at him or anything but I I just I'm very verbal and I'm constantly talking to either him or myself all the time I'm always talking always you know I very rarely am I quiet um, I have I have a hard time with silence and I don't I don't know why that is um, meditation has always been really hard for me um, people tell you oh just meditate meditate and I agree that meditation is a great thing but my mind goes poof and my brain goes crazy and I start laughing or I just have to burst out talking for example one time my parents were here and um, we were trying to I think I think just my mother and I were were watched I think my dad was gone with my husband and Cameron was either with them or they went or he was still in school I can't remember but I think it was just my mother and I 
and we were watching something on TV and I kept talking like I was talking incessantly through the whole thing and then I said wow I said I I can't you're not even hearing what they're saying like I caught myself and I said boy I can't even be quiet for five minutes I said I said I'm gonna stop talking and or was she reading a book it doesn't matter I think she was reading a I don't know but anyway I tried through a commercial set of seven commercials to be quiet without saying a word I didn't make it it was killing me <laughs> but in a movie theater um, very rarely do I talk I'm pretty quiet it's one of the only places I mean even in a church I will sit there and talk. <laughs> of course the church will fall in if I walk into it <laughs> but um, I, I, I don't know. What about you? You know, are you a talker or a quiet person? I mean, even when I'm reading comics or books or something, I'm blah, 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 blah. Um, I think if I were on a deserted island all by myself, I would be making conversation with the animals the water, the rocks. I would be setting up little coconuts and talking to them. Um, anything because they'd be listening. <laughs> they'd have to. <laughs> Maybe I'd draw little ears on them with charcoal or something. I, I don't know. I feel like I have a lot to say. And I don't know if that comes from my family because they are talkers they like to talk but they know how to be quiet I don't know hmm in, 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 introspection 101 hmm dissecting myself 102 <laughs> You know, you ever think about stuff like that? Are you a talker or are you an internal, um, are you a quiet person? You know, like Paul could go probably days without saying hardly anything. <laughs> He's a listener. Uh, in fact, a lot of times I don't think he's listening to me. So I will throw something really whack out there. And he'll go, no, that's not true. And keep doing whatever he's doing. And I'm like, damn it. I thought you weren't listening. But, you know, he's listening. And, <laughs> you know. So we're a good match because he likes to listen. And I'm not saying I dominate the conversation because when he wants to talk, he does. But... Um, yeah, and my, my daughter, my daughter likes to talk a lot too. She's a, she's a jabber jaw, but, um, her boyfriend is a talker too. Both of them, they're, they're, they're chatterboxes. Um, Cameron, Cameron is uh, an argumentative pain in the butt right now. Um, you know, it's hard because I always said, and, and I, I hate feeling like this because I always said, you should be thankful that your child talks because when Cameron started out, he didn't talk, you know, I, we thought, and I think I talked about this before, um, he wasn't talking. He started uttering things at, and then at 18 months, he was a late talker to begin with, but then when he started uttering things, when he turned 18 months, he just stopped. And he would grunt, and we were, you know, worried and stuff. And that's when he, um, when he got, can you hear that snoring? That's my dog. Listen. <laughs> that was a 
burp, excuse me. Do you hear it? <laughs> That's my dog. <laughs> but, you know, when he's so nasty, it's like, be quiet. Just stop talking. So... I feel bad for feeling that way. But to me, Cameron talking like that is noise pollution. Just like these cars that go by with their cherry bomb, um, is that what they call them? Cherry bomb uh, mufflers. Why would you want that on your car? It's noise pollution. Um, I, you know, I don't know why, I don't know why you'd want that on your car. I mean, you know, when I'm out in nature, I listen to nature. I don't want you to think I'm like, bah, 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 over nature. <laughs> but I will talk, you know, like, oh. Look at that tree. Hey, birdie. Look at the little birdie. It's so cute. <laughs> Come here, little birdie. Come here, let me feed you. <laughs> you know you want this food. Come and get it. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Come here, squirrel. <laughs> you're going to be my friend now. <laughs> and then you're going to be dinner. <laughs> no, I will not eat a squirrel. Unless I'm starving. Then I might eat one. But I'd have to be starving. Because I, I watch a lot of um, survival type shows. I watch a ton of discovery. I watch a ton of history type stuff. You know, survival skills and whatnot. In my head, I have so much information that I could survive in the wilderness forever. If I was in a different body. <laughs> so the brain is there, but the body is not. <laughs> I know how to build shelters. I know, <clears throat> excuse me. I know all the, all different ways to build shelters. I know how to thatch a roof. I know how to catch fish in, in like five or six. Mm. I know how to catch fish i know what plants are safe to eat in in um like six different wild parts of different countries <laughs> i know how to track a bear i know different forms of scat <laughs> i know what weapons to take and how to make some different kinds of bow and arrow but I don't have the body for it. And you know what's sad is on these things, when um, these people are trying to survive out there, you know what they find the most along the shorelines? Water bottles. You know, from when you go in the store and you buy like your Poland water or your Avion water, they find those all the time. This one guy that I watch, and I love him. His name is Ed Stafford. You might want to look him up if you're interested in this kind of thing. He's on Discovery Channel. He was a British captain in, or an, a captain in the British Army or something, in the military. He walked the whole length of the Amazon River. Yeah, he's absolutely amazing. He has this show called Marooned, 
and he stayed for 60 days on an island a remote island that um, natives in Australia have the rights to and um, they don't normally let outsiders in well he spent time with the natives and got their permission to stay there for 60 days and they taught him about the landform there, the trees, and how to build the fires with the type of wood that was there because everywhere you go, different types of wood do, you know, some work better than others and all this stuff. Well, where was I going with this? Oh, I know. So um, he was taken into the island as close as the boat could get, and then he had to swim the rest of the way. And he's only left there with, um, an emergency kit with some antibiotics and um, a couple of rolls of gauze and stuff and his two big cameras two um, cam two small cameras that are waterproof and you know you can either wear as a headlamp or on your chest or whatever and some battery packs and a cellular satellite phone that's all he's left with no clothes nothing no knives nothing everything he uses he has to use whatever's there on the island and his point is what he's striving for is not just to survive but to thrive while he's there so he wants uh, a shelter he wants food he wants fire and he wants a good water source so you know actual living like if if you were to be on this island you'd have to live there so you know so you want a home that's semi-comfortable you want to have a, a, a constant source of water fire food so it got pretty lean anyway he scavenged 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 whatever scavenged scavenged the beach every day to find you know what would wash up on the shoreline and see if he could use that while building or to use pieces off of for whatever do you know what he mostly found on the beach yeah water bottles so i knew that there were a lot of problems in the ocean with water bottles and um, it's getting worse so we try and not that I'm on some high horse or something we try very hard not to buy bottled water um, in our house we use a, a Brita and because I, I hate city water oh, I'm from a house that has a uh, has a well you know a ground in ground well type of thing so nice country water you know well not so much in my house they Brita it because there's a lot of sulfur in that water but my sister Darcy oh, she has the best water you can drink it right from the tap because she lives on a farm and they have nice fresh water I wouldn't want to drink from the poop pit though <laughs> But, and my grandmother, her house has, well, she doesn't live there anymore, but her house too. Best water ever. Her and Darcy have the best water ever. But city water, if, if any of you live in the city, I pity a fool who lives in the city. <laughs> I can't stand the taste of the water. Cameron drinks it straight from the tap. Damn, that's hardcore. <laughs> no, no, sir. So... We have store-bought water bottles, you know, the, the ones that, that you just keep refilling. <clears throat> Excuse me. I try not to buy water in the bottles because of that very reason. How do they... Oh, it just makes me sick. He was using them to collect water, you know, and, you know, he put 
he made some fish traps, some little mini fish traps out of some of them to catch for fishing. How the hell did I get on this subject? What the fuck? I don't know. See what you people do to me? You get me talking about plastic bottles on a desert island. Not desert. Um, a tropical island. <laughs> Well, he did stay the 60 days, if you want to know. Oh, oh, that's a spoiler. I don't even know if you guys watch that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah. It was good. I've got two of his books coming now. The one about the Amazon. His, his thoughts and stuff on the Amazon. And then the one from when he was on that island. He's been on other shows as well. Um, what are they called? I don't remember. I watched them all. I'm hoping I can find some more stuff, maybe on Netflix or online somewhere. Um, because we have the Discovery, uh, the Discovery Go app on our TV, and um, I think he was on the History Channel. But um, I love stuff like that, which some people actually find surprising. I actually love the History Channel and the Discovery Channel. A lot. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of TV shows anymore. I watch Netflix and Hulu type television shows. I think most of the crap that's on TV, you know, like syndicated shows, a lot of those are crap now. It's horrible. And I've been trying to find my list of cancellated shows so that I could do that. I had it right here so I could tell you the canceled shows. Oh, wait, is this it? No. And I do have another I do have another movie too to tell you about. But that one's gotta be in a separate thing, so you know you know what you know what to look for. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to close this out, I'm going to eat my breakfast, and if I don't pass out, <laughs> I will come back and do my movie review and the cancellation shows, so that um, I get that out of the way, because um, shows will be starting soon, so my eyes are getting all buggy. <laughs> See what happens when I put my glasses on? My eyes get weird. In fact, I need to go and get my eyes tested. I haven't gotten my eyes tested in way too long. And I have the same, I've had the same glasses for freaking 10 years. 10 years! I want to have some really cool glasses. I was thinking like the, the, uh, either the Buddy Holly type glasses. Or the, the um, um, what do they call the cat glasses that go up at the ends? You know, something really whack. I think that would be cool. Maybe I'll get um, just something cool and cheeky, you know? <laughs> Not chic, cheek. <laughs> um, whoa, did you see my eyes? That's telling me it's time for me to go. But hopefully you stay for the whole thing. Maybe I should break this up into three parts. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, thanks for having coffee with me, if you're still here. If you're not, that's okay. I forgive you. Some people can only handle a little bit of the raccoon at a time. <laughs> I'm so full of shit. <laughs> But I will be back because I do have more that I want to share. It seemed like I had a lot. See, normally I write down on a piece of paper things I want to talk about. I was getting better at that again. But today I just didn't do it because I was so mad at Cameron. I was. I was really mad. And now I'm, I, I'm dying for some Fruity Pebbles. Oh, so good. I love Fruity Pebbles. But you notice that cereal has lost its integrity it melts so fast and i can't stand
stand soft, slimy cereal. Oh, so gross. So I, I pour the cereal and I pour the milk in real quick and just enough milk. And then I eat it so fast before it turns. It's like, don't talk to me. Let me eat this. Well, okay. Now you can talk to me. It never used to do that. And come on, Count Chocula, uh, Frankenberry, and Booberry does not taste like what it used to. Go back to the artificial stuff <laughs> so I can enjoy it. And they're, ah, oh, they're too puffy now. What happened? I want the old cereal bag. I was happy. <laughs> I was a kid. The red color was, what, cancerous? But I was a happy kid. <laughs> I didn't know any better. I figure if we didn't know any better that maybe we wouldn't get cancer. Wouldn't that be nice if we didn't know this stuff had cancer in it? You know, cancerous stuff. Maybe we wouldn't get cancer. <laughs> that would be a dream, wouldn't it? If we didn't know we had cancer, then we didn't really have cancer. Like power of suggestion. Do you know how many? Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm finally sharing some really happy idea here. That if we didn't know we had cancer, we really wouldn't have it. It would just disappear. You know, like if you pretend something's not there. Kind of like with a baby. If you cover your eyes, they think you're really gone. Oh, man. Wouldn't that be cool? Like if you didn't want to deal with your kid for a while and you say... Where's mommy? You cover your eyes. You're gone for a while. <laughs> or when you're playing hide and seek and they can't find you, you're really gone for a while. Oh my God. I'm really good at playing hide and seek. <laughs> so dude, you know, just, I'm just asking for 20 minutes. Don't you judge me. <laughs> just 20 minutes. You know, camera could be looking for me for 20 minutes or, or just get sick of looking for me. And that would be cool because that would just give me enough time to get my nerves back in check where I could come back and deal with shit again. I like that idea. Where's mommy? There could be some world like in in um, Minecraft, like an Ender World, yeah, where we could all meet up, people of your choice, not just anybody. I wouldn't want some people in there. Just people I like. Each one of us could have our own Ender World. That would be cool. Hey, Chris Pratt, meet you in the Ender World. <laughs> no. See, that wouldn't work because I think it would have to have rules. Damn it. Like, you'd have to already know the person. And it would kind of be like, a, do you accept going into their world? Damn it. I know there'd be some rules to it. Hmm. Th yeah, there would have to be rules because, I, you know... There's always something to mess it up because what would happen is somebody would, would ruin it for the rest of us because they would take advantage of it and bring someone in there and hurt them or something or try to take advantage of them and then it would ruin the end of world for each and every one of us. So there would have to be some rules like you'd have to say you were at work. Say I wanted Chris Pratt in there, okay? And I knew him, okay? I'm just setting this up. And I, I like this idea, so so let's go with it for a minute, okay? I'm playing hide-and-seek with Cameron. I'm fed up with Cameron, so I need a break, okay? So I decide to go into my Ender world. Kim's Ender world. And I know Chris Pratt. We're buddies, okay? This is, this is totally non-sexual, okay, guys? Run with it with me. So I, what was I going with this? Oh, yeah. So I play in hide and seek with Cameron, and I want to go into my underworld, and I want to 
meet up with Chris Pratt and say, watch, watch a half an hour of TV. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we know each other. And um, so I go into my underworld and there's this box, like this virtual box or screen thing that comes up on, on the wall or in the air, like in, um, um, what's the name of that movie? doesn't matter. And so you, and then you pick your friend. It's like a list, kind of like Snapchat. And you press invite Chris Pratt, boop, like that. So he's doing whatever he's doing. And only he can see this little <clears throat> button in the air that says, Kim Bateau would like you to visit Kim's Underworld. Do you accept? And then there's a button. Accept or no. And then there's, you know, also underneath, leave a message. You know, like if you can't, why? You know, leave me a message. So he presses, of course, because this is my fantasy. Yes. So, boom, it sends him to my world. Hello. And then the rest, you don't need to know. But then when the 20 minutes are up, boom, he goes back to his wherever he was. I go back to where I'm supposed to be. And the world continues. <laughs> you could even have it pause. You could even have it pause the real world. Oh, you could have it pause just your little area. You know, your scenario that you're in. Like, say he was in a meeting for a script read or something. It could pause all that. That would be cool, too. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then, then I'd have to keep playing. You know, and if Cameron was in a bad mood, he'd still be in that bad mood if I came back. Hmm. I gotta work out the kinks in this. What do you think? <laughs> Would you want an underworld of your own? I think I would. Yeah. I would. But there would have to be some rules and you'd only be allotted so much time. There should be choices. There should be three intervals of time. Only. Only three intervals. And you can't force the person to go in there. And they should have an emergency escape button if, you know... If you're a creeper type person, you're putting them in an uncomfortable, uncomfortable, uncomfortable situation. All right, guys, I am out of here for now. I know I made you think way too much this morning because your brains are exploding and I'm, 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 I'm eating your brains all up. I've lost my mind, so I'm eating yours. <laughs> I will talk to you later either soon later or later later um i will try to find that list of cancellations on shows yes the big bang theory is one of them <clears throat> and i hear that that blonde chick the ditzy one not the cute little smart one that i think is sizzling hot is part of the reason but um, some of the shows, you wouldn't be surprised. And some of them are surprising. But um, I will be back with that. And a, and a movie review. Of a, of a movie. <laughs> it was good. All right. Till then, bye-bye. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.